What's up, YouTube friends? My name is Danny Jones, and welcome to Jones Vibes. Jones Vibes. First and foremost, thank you so much for clicking on this video, and if you enjoy it, please go ahead and hit that penguin button, I mean like button, and then click subscribe as well as hit the notification bell. That'll keep you up to date when I make more content. And if you saw my hype video last week that I released, you'll know how excited I was for this movie, and uh, it did not disappoint. That's right, I have finally seen The Batman in theaters, and today we're gonna talk about it. But before we actually do walk into the Iceberg Lounge, I do wanna let you know that this is a spoiler review. And so if you have not seen this movie, take off your cowl, hang up the cape, and stop watching right now. And if you have, like me, let's step out of the shadows and break this thing down. So as you've probably seen online, this movie is getting a lot of praise. And as far as DC is concerned, this is really great news for them and Warner Brothers. And so I'm happy to see that so many other people liked it as much as I did. My honest initial thoughts were that it was just, it was spectacular. It was a spectacular movie. Like from the very beginning, it sets the tone. Like you have the Riddler and all of a sudden you're placed in like this horror movie. And the Riddler's theme is just so chilling. It's just so ominous. Like the way that he's standing behind the mayor, he's kind of out of the frame, in the dark. And then that contrasting with cutting to the Batman. Like, the first 15 minutes of this movie were just mind-blowing. Like, the world building that Matt Reeves was able to accomplish just in a few frames of Gotham and the feel of this entire movie was incredible. When we cut to Bruce, all of a sudden it's this, like, detective, noir, background voice, like, it's October 31st. And I turned to the guy next to me, I was like, that's Halloween, if you didn't know that. But he's walking through this crowd in Gotham and it's just pouring down rain. And the aesthetic of this city was exactly what I wanted. Like I saw a lot from the trailers, but it's one thing to see snippets of it and another thing to be like in the middle of a scene and placed just directly in this almost like cesspool of a city, like metropolitan, dirty, rainy, dark, other adjectives. It truly felt like nowhere that I had ever been. It, it was pulled right from the comics. And then just the setup of like this monster, this Batman, and his narration just saying that the light in the sky is not a signal, it's a warning. And showing these criminals doing things in like back alleys, but they see that light and they just start looking into the shadow, like a horror movie, like what is gonna come out of there? And so all that leading up to that train scene that we saw in the very first trailer, this gang of dudes are like messing with this guy off of a train, which I feel like if I was in this world, I would be that guy that was just like randomly getting messed with. Just my luck. But out from the shadows steps the Batman. And we get our first real look at Robert Pattinson and what it's gonna feel like. And just right away, you see how well trained he is, how tough he is, how brooding he is. A good word for it would be vicious. Like, he seems like an animal. And the thing that surprised me the most was that he looked like he was stronger than me, which is kind of tough. Like, I have a yellow belt in karate. The karate studio that I took lessons at, it actually ended up being a scam, which is another reason why I'm always seeking vengeance. But I will say that one of my favorite things about this movie is that it literally just focuses on the Batman. Like, the mix between Bruce and Batman is pretty much non-existent. And so when we see Bruce in this film, he still just feels like Batman. Like, he's not that, uh, that playboy millionaire billionaire that we've seen in the past. Like, he just hasn't quite figured that out. All he knows is just how to be the Batman. And so although we get a, a few scenes of just him without the cowl on, like, a majority of the movie is just... Him in the suit being a detective, the world's greatest detective. And I was like, sick, dude. <laughs> like, that's what I wanted. We spend a majority of the time just kind of falling down this rabbit hole as he exposes the corruption of the politicians in his city, as well as the Riddler reveals secrets from his past about his family. And I just gotta say, it's, just, it's so well written. This script is so tight. And then we also just have a stacked cast, like Robert Pattinson is acting across from Andy Serkis, who plays Alfred. And it's not the same Alfred that we've seen, you know, like Michael Caine. Like, he kind of seems a lot like Bruce in the sense that he's very damaged as well. And the death of Thomas and Martha still has an effect on him. And so although he doesn't want to see Bruce going out and killing himself every night, 
he's also actively trying to solve these puzzles as well because he wants to get to the bottom of some of these things. And I'm happy that they didn't overload those two with dialogue. In this movie, Gordon is really his, his kind of partner in action. I thought Jeffrey Wright did a phenomenal job playing this character because you're kind of walking a, a fine line with that character. I feel like in the Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher films, he was kind of just the comic relief. And then you go to the Nolan trilogy and we have one of the greatest actors of all time, Gary Oldman, giving his heart to this role. Jeffrey Wright, he just acted like he was along for the ride. Like he was kind of down the middle. Like he didn't really know what was going on a lot of the time, but he was smart enough to trust the Batman. And I think that in the end, he sees that this guy is a hero. There's a lot of little arcs throughout this movie and I really liked that one. And then moving on to Selena, I was very curious about how they were gonna handle Catwoman. That's actually why my friends call me Whiskers because I'm curious like a cat. <laughs> but man, Zoe Kravitz. I loved her in this role. She was like the perfect blend of strong and bold. Then on the other side, she was she was desperate and kind of on edge. And I don't know, I mean, I think this is just really the first Catwoman that really clicked for me. Like, I really got to feel where she was coming from. And then kind of developing a relationship between the bat and the cat, like early on in this trilogy, I think is gonna do some really good things. I mean, potentially down the line, she could go bad, which would make for some really interesting scenes, so. And then on to the villains, we're gonna waddle over to the penguin. I loved the character of Oswald Cobblepot. He did such a good job and also provides a little bit of comic relief in this and also is a part of the best scene in the movie for me, the Batmobile chase. And I might end up getting back to this, but I have to say, when the Batmobile first started in this movie, like, that vehicle starts and the theater shook like I haven't felt in a long time. And man, it just, that that whole scene was insane just to end with the camera flipping and watching the Batman walk up and just how scary that would be. It's insane. And then the relationship that he has with Carmine Falcone. You know, Carmine is kind of like the leader of the underworld, we come to find out. And John Turturro is just a <laughs> an insane act. I mean, that was such a good performance and even talking to bruce they pull it right out of the long halloween where he's like when i got shot i went to your dad for help and you were standing at the top of the stairs looking down at me and i just love the imagery that that creates in your head and the relationship that this guy has as well as the stuff that we find out that happened having to do with the waynes which slowly but surely the riddler is like unraveling a piece of string this whole movie and paul dano Honestly, I, I didn't expect to like him as much as I did because we've, we've seen him. And, you know, in Prisoners, he's fantastic. He's fantastic and There Will Be Blood. And he, he crushes it in those roles. And so I couldn't really, I guess, imagine him being able to push it to a, a higher place than that. And so even though I knew he would be a great villain, I didn't expect him to take it to the place he did. And uh, he was just great. Like when he's like singing Ave Maria and the way that he can go from high to, to deep and growly and frightening was just, it was interesting. I really, really liked what they did with that character. And you get this scene outside the Iceberg Lounge where the Riddler's theme starts again. And so you know something's coming and he's kind of watching from a distance and the DA gets inside his car. And once again, we have like this horror movie moment where the Riddler is sitting in the backseat of his car and surprises him and wraps this this collar thing around his neck, or at least has already constructed it, that is, uh, that is based off of the pizza bomber, if I'm getting that right. And so Matt Reeves took a lot of these real world stories and applied them into this story with a Batman. But long story short, the Riddler has been leaving messages for the Batman and him and Gordon have been kind of chasing these clues. And at the same time, Selena's friend was killed. So she's trying to track down who did this and she finds out that it's Carmine Falcone, her father, and Bruce finds out via a conversation with Falcone and then a conversation with Alfred that Carmine could be potentially responsible for the Wayne's death. No matter what, he is responsible for a lot of things. Like the Renewal Orphanage Trust, this charity 
has turned into a fraud. It's turned into one of the biggest money laundering schemes within Gotham. So something that Thomas Wayne started when he was running for mayor has pretty much fueled the underground of Gotham this entire time. And so Selina acts rashly and she goes to kill Carmine and Batman obviously steps in and stops that from happening and gets him arrested when the Riddler shoots Carmine Falcone. And so this is kind of the catalyst that sets up the whole ending of the movie. And I've seen a lot of people online saying that this third act was kind of weak. And I don't know, it seems like a lot of action for me. And then just him getting like knocked out and then grabbing that like adrenaline that he pumps into his leg and becomes like crazy Batman. That was some like mind blowing stuff to me. Just because then, then that guy on the ground, he says, you know, they're like, who are you? And he's like, I am vengeance. And you have this full circle realization from, you know, the opening 15 minutes in the movie where Batman clearly states, I am vengeance. And then just to hear one of Riddler's minions say, I am vengeance, he realizes kind of the effect that he is having. And so you have this transition from that dark past to like a step in a new direction towards like becoming a hero. And he cuts the wire and falls into the water and he guides all those people out. And like you see Gordon as well as Selena looking at him with this, this like glimmer, this like hopeful look. Like he is the hero that we need right now. And I think that, you know, the story mixed with Greg Fraser's cinematography, it was just so beautiful. Every shot, even if it was three hours long, I wanted to live for another six hours, 12 hours, like as much time as I can spend in this universe. Like I want a trilogy, an HBO Max series, anything. And that mixed with Michael G. Aquino's score, like I tweeted out, but I truly think that this is the best film score that I've heard in over 10 years. I haven't heard a score for a movie that I've immediately put on in my car on the way home from a movie in a really, really long time. And then just back to Matt Reeves and his direction for this project. I just feel like he nailed it. Like that's what Batman is supposed to feel like. And then something we really need to talk about, the end with the Riddler in his cage, you know, Paul Dano sitting there kind of like pouting because his plan didn't go exactly how he wanted. He's like moaning, he's like Mwah. And like I said in my hype video, I feel like I'm always pronouncing his name right, but Barry Kogan, Barry Keegan, in the, in the most Joker way possible, he kind of like, digs into the Riddler's mind a little bit, convinces him that, you know, hey, I'm your friend, it's okay. Everybody loves a comeback story in Gotham. And Edward Nashton's like, who are you? And the Joker's like, riddle me this, the less of them you have, the more one is worth. And like, immediately that like hypnotizes the Riddler because he's like, oh my gosh. And he answers it, he's like, a friend, and they start laughing. And really my only my only thing with this scene is I am so critical about how the Joker laughs. And so like, I couldn't even focus because I was trying to listen to Barry's Joker laugh like so intensely. <laughs> I was like, is he nailing it? What What's happening? Is, is he the Joker? Is that the Joker's laugh? And I'm sure that in between now and either the sequel or maybe it'll be the third film where he really steps into the light as like the big villain, the Joker. I'm sure they're gonna really flesh things out. You can already see just from that side shot how mangled and messed up his face. Like I talked about in my previous video, they looks like they went that direction. Like they're making him scary to look at, like frightening, which I am stoked about. But uh, I guess I'm gonna wrap this up. Please let me know down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter, Jones Vibes Only. Let me know what you thought. Like, I'm so curious to hear what other people are thinking about this movie. Did you like it? Would you put it above The Dark Knight? Is this your favorite Batman movie? And also go ahead and like this video as well as subscribe. That helps keep me in the algorithm on YouTube and gets me shown to more people. Like I've said in the past, I'm trying to build this Jones Vibes community and I would love for you to be a part of it. So I hope everybody out there is safe, happy, and healthy, and I will see you next time. Jones, bye.